Welcome back to Workshop Friend and uh, it's been some time since I posted a video that's because I've been in Pakistan and I was packing up my Colchester student lathe ready to return to the UK. That's all packed up I returned a few days ago and I'm waiting for it to be collected and I really don't know how long it's going to take for it to be shipped over here. So in the meantime I thought I would uh, start on another project. Uh, one of those is uh, my Meddings pillar drill and I want to put this three-phase motor which I took off my old lathe which I recently sold and I want to fit that on there with VDF supply so I can vary the speed and have a variable torque function too. You'll also notice some other changes here. Um, this space was occupied by my MyFord Super 7 lathe which I've shifted over here and uh, that's in anticipation of the culture student coming and uh, I will put that roughly in this space. So today I've been uh, starting to work on um, this pulley. This is a pulley I worked on before to fit to my Meddings drill. Uh, that was for a single phase motor. Now I want to adapt it to this motor and this has a different size uh, shaft. So I'm working on this and I'm just sleeving this so that it can fit on here nicely and get it as low as possible. Having done that, I will then focus on uh, getting that uh, properly mounted on the drill and lining up the pulleys. So we'll go over to the lathe now and continue working on this bushing. So this bush I've just removed from the pulley and it was uh, to fit a different size motor. So rather than throw it away, I'm just repurposing it. For those of you who've seen me use this lathe before, you might notice that it's a bit uh, zippier, a bit faster of the starting and stopping. That's not just because I have changed the settings on the VDF drive, but because I've upgraded the motor. That's now a three-quarter horsepower, 0.55 kilowatts, with a new VDF drive. So that's left the old motor, the blue one on the bench, to fit to the Meddings drill. I think the swarf's getting stuck inside the chuck and it's just upsetting the, the tool when I get to the bottom of the cut. You can see there it was bushed before. So what I'm doing is I'm just machining that out and then we'll put a new bush in there and then uh, bore that to suit the spindle on the motor. So the piece of material I have is nominally one inch, but it will need to be tidied up to make a nice fit in there. And this is currently 0.943, so I've got about 55, 57 thou to go. Um, although I want to leave this slightly undersized, so I'm going to keep going until hopefully the remnants of this bushed area will, will just drop out, I hope. Finishing with a chamfer to provide a lead-in for the pressed-in sleeve. So this is made from bits and pieces really. Uh, you would have seen this in another video I made or about 18 months ago when I fitted the pulleys to the, to the drill. So I just used uh, scrap materials here and rather than hunking it out of a large piece, I made it from two, two pieces. That needs to be glued back in there. And I learned last time that uh, aluminium against aluminium, if, you're not, if you try be greedy and aim for a, an interference fit or a light interference fit and glue it just doesn't work uh, the aluminium picks up and uh, it just stops it from pressing in so I've lightened that fit slightly I'll give this a clean up um, with some solvent and then we'll put some adhesive in there and glue those two together and then we can make the third bush which goes inside here and we'll suit the diameter of the, of the uh, shaft. 
So I'll give that a clean and we'll press those together with some adhesive. Now I've got a screw to line up with that slot and the hole there, so I need to align that, uh, put some adhesive on there and then press it in. Make sure I line up the screw hole. Okay, not going in square, I don't think. Oh, I see what's happening. This is touching the rim there. So I'll put something smaller in there. Try that. Just make sure we can get the set screw in. Yep. That goes in a fact that we can come down a touch more. That's it. Good. I'm making the sleeve from a piece of one inch aluminium bar, uh, just facing it and then turning it down to be a nice fit into the bush I've already made. And uh, later on, I'm going to relieve the center section to provide a gap for the glue to uh, bond with the other component. So now the sleeve is ready to be bonded to the rest of the assembly and most of the adhesive is going to go into that center section which I've relieved. Okay, that's in nice and firm. I'm going to let that set overnight and we'll come back tomorrow, face this and uh, bore it out to the, to the size of the shaft. I also need to put a clearance hole through this section here so that the set screw can go through. This is threaded. Uh, there's plenty of depth of thread there so I don't need to thread the inner part. It also needs to be slotted and uh, I'm also going to just face this off and tidy this up. There was a smaller pulley on here that got cut away when I bored this out. In fact, I don't need that smaller pulley. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. I'll return to this tomorrow. So, as so often is the case with workshop projects, certainly in my workshop, I've got to um, 
make a slight uh, diversion from my my workflow so uh, I'm going to going to need to mount this on my four jaw chuck and unfortunately I don't have a chuck key at the moment um, the chuck key I had I shared with another chuck which uh, I sold with with my other lathe so I've just turned up this uh, short length of silver steel or drill rod and um, left a larger larger diameter here for uh, a cross piece and I just wasted it slightly turn this down to uh, just over the uh, across corners di dimension so I'm going to take this over to the mill and mill the four flats on there So at last I'm back on track and uh, can set up the pulley in the four jaw chuck. There's one task on this uh, that's outstanding. I need to harden and temper this, but I don't have any gas at the moment. So uh, that's a job for later. I'm just reversing the jaws so that I can grip the pulley and then we can bore out this sleeve which I've put into the final size. Now I was going to do this side first, but actually it's going to be easier if I face that so that um, I can get a better location on the left hand side. You can't see from here, but basically this is interfering with these. So if I can face that off, that's no longer required, uh, then I can get a better purchase. So what I'll do is I'll reverse it and we'll do the other side first. Okay, I've done a lot of fiddling around. So I've got it running more or less square and more or less concentrically. But to be honest with you, this rim isn't completely round. So that's the best kind of average. And uh, I'm going to settle for that. So we can now bore out the bush to the final size. Okay, all that needs to be done now is to cut the slot for the for the key, and I need to make sure that that lines up with the with the position of the set screw. 
So we'll go over to the shaper for that. And I'll also need to uh, go through with a tapping drill and then uh, tap that hole right through to the center for the set screw. So we'll go to the shaper for the next operation. So just double checking the total depth of the keyway and the shaft. That's 0 0.6, 0 0.628. Oh, that's about 0 0.627. Well, we need a bit of clearance in there, so we'll, we'll come down another few thou just to make sure nothing binds. So what we need to do now is just open that slot up with the correct width. And I'm, to do that, I'm going to take a bit off each side. I think we're ready to fit this now. So I've got the set screw in and uh, yep, that's all lined up. So let's see how this goes. Okay, that's our pulley fitted. Okay, what I need to do now is mount the motor on this back plate. And I've set this strip up here level so I can line up uh, the two pulleys. And then I'll just scribe a line on there, which will give me the height. It's a bit difficult to do this on my own, but there I go. That's about, so that, that distance there is about the same as that distance. If I can scribe a line in there. Again, there. Good. Well, that's all we have time for this session. Um, I'm glad to have got the pulley securely mounted on the motor, and that's ready for mounting on the back of the pillar drill. So next video, I'm going to be doing the wiring. I've got a VDF drive, which I used with that motor before on my old lathe, uh, when it was mounted on my old lathe. I've got here a um, potentiometer, which I'm going to use for speed control. And I've got the rotary switch in there, the reversing switch I'm going to use. Um, to, to control the VFD. So that's next video. 
I didn't mention earlier that in shifting the Super 7 lathe, I was uh, extra careful to uh, chalk up the stand here to make sure that everything was level. And after it settled, I then went ahead and leveled the machine. And that really does make a difference to its accuracy. So I'm very happy with this setup here. This is just the right space for it. I put this white sheet behind it to give a bit of reflection uh, to help um, uh, illuminate my work. I put this shelf up here too provides a bit more storage. So this is a nice setup. But of course, the reason for doing that is to make space for the culture to student lathe. I haven't any news about that. Um, it's now uh, well over a week since I left and uh, it's still sitting there uh, waiting to be collected. Um, so uh, we'll see. Hopefully I'll get it within the next uh, month or six weeks. And uh, I look forward to setting it up here in the workshop. Anyway, before then, I'm sure I'll get another video out on the pillar drill and uh, we'll, I do hope that you'll join me for the next video. I have uh, vastly many more viewers than subscribers. I think roughly 10 to 1 is the ratio at the moment. So if you haven't subscribed then uh, do consider doing so. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next time.